Hello, everybody, wherever you are in the world. My name is Omolola Festus Adedayo. I am your host today. I want to welcome you to another always interesting, intriguing, whatever adjective you can use to qualify it. Mothers of parents budding, raising multicultural children in the diaspora, as usual, is going to be very hot today. Today in the house, I have very wonderful people that will be joining me on the show. And um, honestly, I just want you to share this program. I beg, make them share them wherever, anywhere, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. No, I'm not on Twitter, am I? I? I don't know. My producer is going to stroke me for this. But I don't think we're on Twitter. But look, if you are joining, share this program. Share it. We're going to be talking about something very important. I don't know if you guys remember that song some years ago. I don't know. Children of this day may not understand it, but I'm sure Barbara and Tayo may remember it. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things. Sex, baby. Let's talk about sex. But hey, we're not talking about it that way. We're talking about it in a very educated. Barbara is dancing in the studio. <laughs> And Tyler is just smiling like, okay, you girls are in trouble after the show. <laughs> yeah, but we're not talking about sex in that light. We're talking about sex in the light of how do I start discussing sex with my children? What if they have questions? How do I tell them about their body part? How do I make them comfortable about talking about sex? Because... Um, a few days ago, I was talking with my children, not days, weeks, and we were talking about sex. My eldest and my youngest, and my youngest was like, mommy, what do you mean by that? You know, covering his face and all of that. But I have to tell him like, hey, look, it's, it's good we discuss about it. It's not a taboo. We talk about it because we want to educate you. And thank God his sister was there that helped me modernize <laughs> the language I was using. So before I reel off, I would like to introduce our guest for today's show. And I will be introducing, I'm not going to introduce Barbara first. We all know Barbara. Barbara is our favorite. We are going to introduce Timita Yo on the show. Timita Yo, thank you very much for joining us. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and just uh, be part of this beautiful show. Thank you. Thank you, Taya. And last but not the least, I'm going to be introducing my girl, our girl. You all know her, Barbara Spin. Hey, here we are again. <laughs> Yes. We're in the room again. <laughs> yes, we're in the room and we're talking about sex, Barbara. We're talking about all the good things and the bad things. Let's, yes. maybe, let's, talk, let's about talk about sex. sex. Let's talk yes. about sex. In, in, in a very productive way. Yeah. In a very productive and educative way. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, guys, mm. let's get start. How yeah. do I introduce sex to my children? Yeah. Oh, Tayo, ask the first, the man in the scene, which is your first time. Maybe you can give us the the, 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 the way to go. <laughs> we'll put you on the spot. Yes. And tell us. Okay. 
<laughs> right. Well, thanks for first of all having me, Lola. I really appreciate it. This, this is my first time, so um, give me some time to get used to the whole beautiful <laughs> ambience. Now, for me though, um, I think you have to start early, right? You have to start early um, to you know educate them because you know telling them about their body parts, helping them to understand that you know you know. That, uh, their body is something that they need to understand and protect, you know, for a boy, you know, tell him, him about his body part and also a girl, you know, because, um, you know, there's going to be time, right? A girl, your daughter may be like, okay, mommy, daddy, where, where, where do baby comes from? Okay, where do baby come from? Um, you know how do baby get into let's say you have a daughter and you have a wife that's expecting a baby you know the little girl may be like okay the mother's tummy is getting bigger what is going on here you know and the mother may be like okay i'm expecting a um uh i'm expecting a um a baby right and the baby may be, the, the child may be like okay we are we are the baby come from you know so that's a good way to kind of tell them about you know their body parts you know biology and stuff like that so uh, i mean no, so that's what really, i mean really yeah prior, do we have to wait for the yes. baby to ask where the baby come from because i know i have i have here that what if they ask the body they have questions but do we technically and really have to wait until the child comes to meet us and ask, what if mom is not pregnant? I think it's also knowing that um, there's an element of either you're telling them too soon or you're telling them too late. Because when you're trying to describe something or show something to a child, you need to be on a wavelength that you know what I'm saying. This is my child at this level they understand. Right. And fortunately for us, the schools have it. They do PSHE. I don't know what is the, what's called in the United States about sex, um, sex topics in the classroom. Now they're doing it in primary school and then they're doing it in secondary school. So if your child, if you're following your child and if they're going to talk about PSHE, the school does let you know that this is where we, this, this are some of the t things we're going to talk about this year. And it's incumbent on us as parents. How do you start? Because like you say, you are starting because you're looking at it as body parts. Some of the um, indicators of sex, for instance, for, for, for a girl, is the development of the breast. You're taking your child to buy their first sports bra. bra. Mm -hmm. Why do I right. need a sports bra? What is it? Why you get, what does it mean? And then I can see all these other women. Now that we start, we start talking about me having some, actually, yeah, mom, you have one bigger than me. You know, so what is it we're talking about? Because sometimes there's even a point in the shop that some of the children's sports bra, you might think, oh, this kind of projects them a little bit. Or the child might pick some one that you think, hmm, why she want that? Because that's revealing. As far right. as that child at that stage wants, it's just something that I need to wear when I'm doing PE mm -hmm. so that I don't feel awkward. Mm -hmm. So you can have that separate conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the other topics come in. And if they're doing it in school, what is it that you do? Do you speak to your child before they go to school or the school does it, and then you come home, and then you do the follow-up. I think those are some of the areas that, as a mother, is a burden for me, or will be. Now my children are old, so, it, you know, that is the area that, do I speak to the child first, before they go to school, and get the generic information, or I wait for them to do that lecture, and then when they come home, actually, okay, how was school? What was the topic? Which areas didn't you understand? What did you talk about? Okay, let's bring it down to you as an individual. Because what I find is um, as our children grow up, right. they start to demonize sex. Yeah. Right. If I say as a mother, um, you know, shall I say dad and I are having sex? Oh, mom, that's too much. That's too much. Right. As soon as your child gets to that stage, 
it's very difficult to now bring it down to what it is that you know leads to you having a sexual relationship so let me not just go too much it's, it's, it's funny it's funny yeah. you're saying that because i will have to um i don't know how you know your mom yeah. introduced you to it Bado. <laughs> she didn't <laughs> she didn't daniela Bado. thank you so yeah. much parents should always talk about about yeah. it first yes uh, i agree yeah. with that yeah. i right. remembered um when i first started my menstrual period Mm. I was, um, I think I was in, here would say middle school. I was in high school. Yeah. I was in high school. I was in the senior level then. And I think I just went to my mom and like, hey, I need a part. And my mom was like, what? Yeah. What? You, you know? <laughs> when did it happen? Yes. I'm kind of yeah. curious, you know, and, and for me, and I'm, I'm going to be personal. For me, I started with my children from the age of three. Mm -hmm. And like Tayo said, I started by exposing them to their body parts. Mm -hmm. I right. do not sugarcoat it. I do not call it nickname. I <sighs> happen to have an experience working in a child abuse center. And mm. oh God, that was really traumatizing the for different me. different names, yeah. Wow. That was yeah. really traumatizing when you see parents coming in six week, six week old babies. Mm -hmm one-year-old baby, three-year-old babies being sexually molested, mm -hmm. sexually assaulted. By a parent, or, yeah. By a parent or even by an uncle mm -hmm. or by a friend, people that you trust. You know, it is so disheartening. And that's really awakened me to understand that, no, I cannot wait, especially with my, I think they are Gen Z now, right? Mm -hmm. Gen, yeah, I think. Gen X and Gen Z. I think. The millennia is oh um, yeah, Gen X, Gen <laughs> Alpha. Outside the millennia, right? Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. All those generations. <laughs> right. I'm telling you, those this generation is faster than the, than lightning. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's because they have information, too much information out there. Yeah. So as a parent, the sooner you can engage your child in talking about their body parts, what it does, what it stands for, and at the level that they understand. Maybe the first level when you were talking about it, just telling it what it is and mm -hmm. what different. Mm -hmm. And as they grow right. up, it becomes a conversation that you can always interject. I mean, if your child now has a starts their menstruation, they need to know that they could get a pregnant. Mm -hmm. If right. and what causes you to become pregnant. If your boy is puberty, we right. know what happens or I haven't got a son, so I hear what happens. And how do you explain to the boy, make them understand and take control and understand the changes? Because pu pu puberty is a very, 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 very strange period for a child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because they need to deal with their mental health. They need yeah. to deal with their physical development. Right. They need to deal with their emotions. They need to deal with their attachment in certain mm -hmm. terms of friendship so right. if there's also the burden of not understanding what sex is or what sex am i and and especially in the modern day of description if as a parent you're not speaking to your child then actually you are saying society can bring them up for me yeah, yeah. and that is what happens you know uh, it's a big burden it is. Yes, yes, it is a big burden, and I agree with you, Barbara. But before we go on, we'll take a short break. Uh, the producer has a song um, for parents to teach younger children how to introduce them to sex. So we'll, oh, we'll take yeah. it away, and then we'll be back. Take it away, Kitty. This is Pantasaurus. He's going to help us with our song about pants. Pant, pant, Pantasaurus, pant, pant, Pantasaurus. What's in your pants belongs only to you Your pants cover up your private parts Your private parts belong only to you If someone asks to see, just tell them no Pantasaurus likes to wear his pants He wears them all day long They cover up his private parts And that's what makes him strong If someone asks to see or tries to touch him underneath them he tells them no, then tells someone he trusts and likes to speak to. What's in your pants belongs only to you. Your pants cover up your private parts. 
your private parts belong only to you. If someone asks to see, just tell them no. If someone asks to see or tries to touch under your pants and says to keep it secret, then you must tell them no. Then go and find someone you trust and tell them straight away. They'll say well done for speaking out and make everything okay. What's in your pants belongs only to you. Your pants cover up your private parts. Your private parts belong only to you. If someone asks to see, just tell them no. Oh, wow. That is very interesting. <laughs> that wow. is very interesting. Welcome that is back. Good. Yeah. <laughs> if you're just joining us. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If you're just joining us, welcome back. This is a mother's body raising multicultural children in the diaspora. And um, please don't be carried away by the title, Mother's Body. It's not only a mother's body, it's a parent body. Right. It's multicultural children in the diaspora, wherever you are. If you know where I am, you're in the diaspora. If you know where Barbara is and Tayo is, you're in the diaspora. You are, if you're outside where we are, you're in the diaspora. So wherever you are, that is different from where we are, is the diaspora. And we are talking about what's in your pants and what's in your shirts. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what we are yes, talking see. about. Yes. yes. Amen. That's a very simple way to break it down for toddlers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very, very it simple. Is. Way. Yeah. 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 Very simple for toddlers. There's also the element of the curiosity of a child. Yes. Right. This thing yes. that is mine, nobody's allowed to touch. What is it? Why? 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 Mm. There's mm. plenty. And I think, yeah, it is um, for toddler stage, then that's good. Because as I said, I think you gradually accumulate it as opposed to getting up one day and wanting to talk about everything yeah. to right. your child so mm. i think yeah with, with, with the perception of um, toddler in mind i can listen to that because otherwise my brain goes over speed <laughs> right. you know yeah. one challenge for men has been um you know growing up most parents focus on the girls on the ladies that mm. oh do this be careful about guys be careful but they don't focus on the boys boys no you know they don't focus on the boys nobody tells a boy okay do this be careful you know they just let the boy do something and that creates a challenge because when the boy gets older he cannot articulate properly to his son or his child yeah. his daughter and I, I have that challenge too because I couldn't, I mean, I had to look, do a lot of Googling because I nobody taught me anything. So, yeah, you're right. Boys get molested too. That's true. Boys, so yeah, you know, mm. I mean, that, meaning that um, nobody has about little boys. Of course, with the Catholic Church, everybody heard about it now. But back in the day, it was all about girls. Girls, you know, you so, know, and that, that creates such a problem for boys. Because we become that's, older that's men. Very, that's very interesting, Tayo, that you're bringing that perspective in. And yeah. Barbara and I um, agree with us. I'm sure Barbara is not opposed to that, that the, the focus has always been on the girls. Yes. Mm -hmm. But nobody is paying attention to the boys. But before we go on, I'll quickly just want to read the comments. I, I want mm -hmm. to thank everybody for sending in their comments. I think um, the comments that's on, on the screen now, I think... Um, viewers can read it but um there is a comment here that says i agree that children should be educated about their body parts from a very young age as they all develop at different stages which is yeah. very true you know what my three-year-old my at three like i said the last time at six year old my daughter asked me mommy when can i have a boyfriend my son got a little note from no i think it's it's yeah it was a note be my vow and he freaked out 
This was in third grade. He freaked out. I mean, he's eight. So you see the difference. And that makes me, in line with what Tyre is saying, I'm going to read one more comment and then we would um, move on from there. Um, and that's Ma Dayobo says, I think information about sex, exeteria is all over social media, which is true. The yeah. key for me is for parents to talk to their children about why sex is important and not to be joked with. Yes. Yes, and I have so many friends that are struggling now because of that. And that is really, 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 really true. You know, the main fact that, and I think it has to do with our African culture. And yeah. not yeah. we are so fixated on everything boils down on the girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we try to make the boy, I'm not trying to be sexist now or anything, but most of the time we try to make the male child like, oh yeah, um, I am in charge, I am in control, you know, I can do whatever I want. But then you're telling the girl, whatever you want, you have to keep your body, you have to do this, but we are not telling, passing the same message to the boy. As a man, Tayo, how, what suggestion or what advice would you give to parents to help teach even the boy children or the boy child to chastity as well as the girl child? Yeah. So I think the first thing is that um, parents need to get educated, first of all, because that's the bottom line. Because most of our parents, they don't, they are not educated. They don't understand how to communicate or teach sex education. Now, for boys, you should understand that girls are quicker to develop than boys. Yeah. A seven-year-old boy and a seven-year-old girl, they are not at the same level. Mm -hmm. A seven-year-old girl can think way more, you know, deeper and articulate her thoughts better than a boy is pair. So, but, and, you know, because they also develop so much, you know, development. So I think parents need to just, you know, call the boys. I, nobody ever spoke to me growing up. Nobody said anything to me growing up. Uh, I learned, like they said, with life, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. And, but I think that parents need to really uh, focus on the boys too and not on the girl only because uh you know boys to go through stuff mm. you know we go through stuff yeah. too you know yeah, so, and, yeah. Thinking, and talking in yeah. that light barbara you will come in yeah talking in that light tayo what do you think about this perception of and and i think this thing boils down from the very elementary for boys or oh, boys don't cry boys don't display emotion and i think that is where we have this I, I am going to say this out there. If you are in support, say yay. If not, say nay. <laughs> I think most, um, now I am intentionally saying some African men, I don't want to use the word most because mm -hmm. I have not done research on that. I don't know how factual that is. Some African men are very unemotional. They cannot express wow. emotion. They cannot express sexual desire. They cannot express where they are feelings. They cannot cry even when they hurt, even when they want to. How do you guys think that as parents, we should try and at least with our own children, start correcting that ideation? Well, go ahead. Sorry, Baba. Go ahead. No, no. I was just thinking, no, it's coming from, it's from the men's perspective. But I think as a mother, the idea is, I don't know which home everybody comes from, from, from where I was brought up or the home I was brought up. The girl was protected in the way and told to do certain things in a very, in a certain way. And the boys were told, oh, just leave them alone. They're perfectly mm -hmm. fine. Just let him get his books. He's just studying. He's the one that's going to be the breadwinner. And he's going to go out there. He's going to make it big. He's going to be the doctor. He's going to be the lawyer. And he'll bring in the money. Nobody thought about his socialization. 
even in studying so hard, how is it going to relate to people? How is he going to make his way up there? We don't include that. But we say this to girls, that you need to be in a certain way because you're going to get married, you'll bring in another family, and you need to be endearing to the family. For you to be endearing to the family, you need to behave in this way, behave in that way. So you have some social skills that you're mm. given as a girl. So you can get in touch with your emotions. But the son is presumed to be the lead and never given the responsibility of, actually, you are accountable to your sister. You know, I'm your mother. I expect these emotions from you. How do you show me care? Mm -hmm. You know, because when you're out there, even if you as the leader or in this home, you don't come in and expect everything down to you because you're the son, but you're also as a part of the household, with some sense of responsibility to us. That's how a guy gets in touch with their emotions. So if you, you you go out with a guy who can cook, is a guy who was in the kitchen. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ty. That guy <laughs> is much more in touch with his emotions mm. and how they treat you as a woman mm. than the one who was told, you're clever, you're intelligent, you're, you're the one that's going to change our you know our our, our, our financial trajectory in the future so because that was not done we mm. have a lot of our african guys actually having certain expectations and then they'll be quick to say to her, but i don't know that's what you're thinking but because as parents we haven't included them in the socialization element of it and we need to do that as parents. You know, yeah. we need to do that as parents because if we're not doing that, or for me, for instance, I've, I've, I've only had girls, but I know friends who've got sons and how they try to relate to them or those who don't relate to their sons mm. because it's a boy who'll be fine, yeah. but they're not. Because, because we made that assumption and give them that authority and responsibility and entitlement. Yes, uh, entitlement. entitlement. Yes. Give them entitlement. Because if yes. I don't do my house chores, the punishment I will get is different to if my brother doesn't do his house chores. I might mm -hmm. even be told, to, never mind, you just go and do it if he couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Because that's right. how we were socializing to, from childhood into adulthood, you know? Right. And I think, yeah, I think we're here. So what happens with our young children here? Yes, now? yes. How, and, do and, we, and, how do we socialize them? Yes, and that is, you know, that is one thing why a mother's body, you know? And Tayo, I am so sorry that you were molested by a late children than you were the age of 10. That mm. is so sad. Things like this break my heart. Yeah, you know, it's so sad in that, and like we've been saying, the girls mature quickly. We tend to tell the the girls, "Oh, are you a girl? This is how you sit. This is how mm -hmm. you you respond when you are right. out there." And um, two weeks ago, we talked on dating. Yeah, you know, and Barbara and I talked about you know things to look out for, a dating relationship, and when you know we are preparing the girl to mortal task. You're teaching the girl, oh, you're going to be the, the wife, you're going to be the mother, you're going to be the comforter, you're going to be like the Holy Spirit. But <laughs> who is going to comfort the girl? Yeah. You're not right. teaching the boy to be a support. You're not teaching right. the boy that, look, as the man, you are the protector first. Right. You, you should... Know, go on, Tayo. Go ahead. You no, know, what I'm... What, what I realize is, uh, you know, boys... Uh, they don't talk as big as girls. I have a daughter, I have a son. My, my daughter talks. Uh, we love it. <laughs> uh, my son, to make him talk, my oldest, to make him talk sometimes, you probably have to really think, okay, what kind of food does he like? What kind of games does he like? Let me make him very comfortable. Let me make him very happy let me make him you know very comfortable so that i could talk to him you know so you have to be extra intentional to get some boys not every boy is like that so you cannot yeah, generalize. Yeah, you know, some yeah. boys talk 
yeah. a lot. But some boys do not talk a lot, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I think to really help a boy, yeah. mm -hmm. to really help a boy connect with his emotion, you will sometimes you need to kind of plan it's put him in a comfortable space whereby i think you see this this takes us back to the old times that i'm talking about it's actually categorizing them for me as a parent know your children yeah. mm. the fact that one talk one doesn't talk it shouldn't matter whether it's because they're a boy or they're a girl because you in your home if you have a topic that you need to discuss with your son even as a wife to a husband i would need to know when do I need to, when do I want to discuss this topic with my husband? It doesn't matter. If I don't know their character, I can't communicate with them. So it's actually knowing your children. So as you have said, Tayo, you can speak to your daughter easily. You can't, your, your son, you need to plan it, but it's not generic. They might be in another home that so long as a topic comes up, dad or mom know how to come on. We have a family time. So we sit at a table. We're all discussing this matter as a family. And then we talk about it openly. And then where I need to now individualize it, then maybe I'll have an off conversation with her in her room, have an off conversation, him in his room. My concern now with our young women and sex, or our, sorry, our young, our young children and sex is, okay, right now, the information out there is a lot. So some of them have got it, some hasn't got it. As this right. program has a mother's burden, what is it? How can we help them to understand the precious information in that uh, nursery um, rhyme that is saying, yeah. you know, what is in What's your pants it belongs to you. Mm -hmm. It's about a boy or a girl understanding the value we place on sex. Every and, time and I, I think Barbara, I'll jump yeah. in. I'll jump right yeah. in there. I think it's not only the value we place on sex. Yeah. I think it is more of the value I place on my body. My body, yes. My body. Yes. This is called yeah. my body, and the Bible yeah. says it is a temple. Right. My body is a yeah. temple. Yeah. So yeah. how do I treat my body? Yeah. And I always tell my daughter this. I say, the way you treat yourself is the way other people will people treat, treat you. Right. Yeah. If yeah. I treat my body as this is a sanctuary, this mm -hmm. is my body, you know, like a tortoise or like a turtle, they carry their shell. Yeah. If, if danger is coming, they just crawl in straight. Like, uh-uh, I ain't seeing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they retreat right into their shell. So yeah. if we right. see our body as it's protecting me, Right. From contracting a lot of whatever is out there. Yeah. Then and accept it right. Yeah. You will. Yeah, you will treat it right. And it's also understanding that because when your young person is trying to get them to understand if the value you're placing on you and your sexual relationship and your interaction with others, they stem me from the fact that but we're in love. Okay, so what is your understanding of love? Actually, as parents, are we able to tell our children love is not just emotions. Love includes the type of emotions of warmth, joy, be supportive, be empathetic, be there for somebody. Now, once you are able to explain that to your child, that love is not just about the feeling, by the time they've gone through that, with this other person that is in front of them, mm -hmm. they will be able to analyze for themselves that is this the right person for me? Mm -hmm. yeah? You know, so you know, I was yeah. thinking about there was a time when molestation was very common on the news yeah. about the Catholic Church molesting boys. Yeah. And it's important to because you know, children are very um vulnerable with authority. So meaning yeah. that when they see somebody as an authority figure, you know, mm -hmm. a lecturer, a teacher, a mm. priest, a pastor, mm. you know, this this person mm. of authority may be molesting this child, but this child may not want to talk about it. Maybe because the uh -huh. child respects their authority so much. Yeah. You know, and, like, and they okay. think they won't be believed if they talk about exactly. it. Yeah. 
It's, yeah. it's very simple. A child will believe, I don't know, he's older than me, he's wiser than me, who am I to challenge? Or if I go and tell and he says he didn't do it, or, or sometimes yeah, nobody will even, believe me. when you're being molested, they are also psychologically, uh, you know, whatever, abusing you. So mm -hmm. they will abuse you and tell you, if you tell. I'm going to kill you. If you tell, you'll I'm be going to kill your mom. You will I'm going to hurt your mom. Yeah. If you tell, you will fail. So all of that emotion, and if your child has not been brought up or your child is not one that has the understanding or is strong enough to say, well, this is, I know this is wrong, so I'm going to take my chances and report it. Hmm. It's very difficult because it's the same way that was talking about rape until recently that a lot of people are able to come forward because already the sort of questions that you will get to evidence the proof because it's not very easy for you to say, even as a child, for uh, this person to be punished for it. They need to ask you a series of questions that will in indicate that, yes, a crime has been committed or this person needs to be, so there must be some sort of evidence. And, and that, if, is, that, that, is yeah. why, that is why I always advocate, and I tell parents this everywhere, make sure your children know the right name of their body part. A yeah. penis is a penis, the vulva is a vulva, Make sure don't don't sugarcoat it. Don't call it mm -hmm. kettle pot. Don't call yeah. it sneak up. Because when a child is reporting molestation or assault or abuse to you, mm -hmm. the child if the child comes and say, "Oh, somebody touched my teacup." <laughs> What's a teacup? Yeah. What will you know, come to your like mind is okay. Take your teacup away from there. <laughs> but when a child comes and tell you that man over there harassed my vulva. Mm -hmm. or touched my breast, I tell my children, every part of your body, even your back, don't mm -hmm. let anybody touch it. I don't know, this this topic is very dead to yeah. my heart because I have seen a lot of children it's a lot, sexually a lot. abused, yeah. molested, and messed up. Yeah. And I, I think I too. think that is deep, you know. It's very deep and I um I I, I think I know like what uh mum mother's put mama is put on there about how the indicators of when you know a person is being abusive, even the way they're older. Mm -hmm. What we want our children to understand, I think going into the abuse stage, it gets a bit deeper for us. What is it that we want our children to know so mm -hmm. that they can protect themselves so that they can confidently stand and say, for me, I have a value in myself. In yeah. my culture, as a lady, we call um, it's tra tra um, literally translated, Akitasia, it's literally translated as cover up. Okay, so the element of us talking about you, what is in your pants, as a lady in the Ashanti, it means cover up. Mm -hmm. So whatever you have must be protected, must be covered, never on show until you are in the right circumstances, in the right place and in the right situation. Mm -hmm. Our young girls these days challenge you when they are half dressed. Mm-hmm. And you ask, mm -hmm. and I will ask my daughter, and she said, "But what are you trying to say, Mum? What do you think? What? Is I mean, it, this is this is the fashion. That it looks nice, but doesn't it?" And the conversation goes on, and then I stop to think, "Okay, am I going to insist on this and make my daughter miserable, or what is it do I say to her to understand that actually it doesn't matter what somebody's going to leer at or not." or it's not going to help somebody to make a decision. My point is you as the person that is stepping out. This value of your body, the temple of God, that should emulate respect, endurance, and, you know, something that is, is appreciating to society. Mm. That is a presentation I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the fact that if you wear this, it means you are telling a man to leo. Mm. That that one you could be fully covered, and if it's a man, <laughs> a man with <laughs> with vision, they will still be <laughs> leering. But I want you to believe 
when I talk about how you wear it, what you're wearing, I'm talking about value for you as an individual. So I think we need to make sure our children understand that person that says, I love you. And you know, they have no right to be getting into your pants. Why are you in a corner in a cinema with them? It's because you're you putting that. yourself in a harm's way. And I think those are some of those little, little, little steps that we want our children, our young ones to understand about sex. Because if we didn't tell them as young, now they're here. Mm. How do we? And as Daniela said, you know, a lot of her friends are struggling with mm. this. Not because they don't know what to do now or they think, but because they were never talked about it. Yeah. They were never discussed in the home. So you've got mm. here. And Tayo, mm. you'd be like, Tayo, you have to Google it. So what's that? You know, and mm. whilst you're Googling it, when you went to Google, which uh, website did you pick? You mm. know, was it a NHS website? Was it a doctor's website? Was it a website that gives you the actual meaning of it? Or you pick the first thing that came? And then it gives you a warped sense of who you should be. So I think it's very important that we, we actually speak to that in a way that okay we i never got anybody to talk to me about my uh, sex as a child you know i was somewhere my mother was somewhere and by the time i got married at 24 all i understood is i have to do everything my, my husband says yeah because otherwise my, i'm not allowed back home you can't come back and say you'll be in divorce <laughs> who's looking after the children you're not allowed back home and so honestly, it, it, it's so sad, Barbara, it because I was our, our, our I children, our yes. children are not properly equipped. Or from my perspective, yes. they're not properly equipped to go into a relationship, to already marriage, because all the things we need to prepare our children with, they're not equipped with. Really. Exactly. We, did, we didn't educate them about sex. We didn't educate our boys. We didn't educate them about the myth and the truth of sex. We make them feel like talking about sex is a taboo. We yeah. make them feel like, oh, it's something that you sh 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 don't, don't, don't speak say. about it. No, yeah. That's it. Yeah. No. And yeah. if anybody talks about it, they, they look at you like you're daddy. Yeah, like, you're just putting out there. It's private. No. And also, yes. we work too much. We work. We're doing all the shifts God sent. We yes. don't have time for our children. Our children's yeah. school time is fixed in between my shift and here. Yeah. And that time that I need to sleep because I'm doing night and I, mm. I can't have time. Shh, look after your brother. Eh? Look after your mm. sister. And the children mm. are bringing themselves up with television. Yeah. Yes. With games. Yes. And the time we have, I need to work. The bills will not be paid. And then we also make that the responsibility of the children because mm. they hear us talk about it all the time. So they're also growing up thinking money all I have to do is work. nothing else has a value. Yes. So by the time we, we teach our children about quality of life, they haven't seen it in me. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know? You know, it's a topic that we say we'll bring. I've had two marriages. My two, my three daughters have been in it, and they, it's difficult for them to get married. Mm. And one will say to, one said to me point blankly, "Mom, I haven't had an example to follow. Mm. How do I come back on that?" Is the mm. truth? Yeah, because yeah. I went in unprepared. Right. And without the street wisdom, that was necessary. And the God wisdom, that was necessary for me to appreciate that. If I'm going to be looked after and supported, does the man know that once I'm with him and now I'm his soulmate? Yes. And how you treat your soulmate and how you treat a wife, a wife, should be very different. Yeah. So we have to get our young ones to understand what sex is about, what is love, you know, right. and, and before we go into it, before they do. Honestly, honestly, Bob, you did, you did it awesome. So now, now let, let's talk about the myth and the truth yeah. about mm. sex. Yeah. I know we talked with how to, how do I start the discussion? What if they ask questions? And we said, yeah. if they have questions, you know, you have to understand, like we said, what level is my child is in? Yeah. 
can that right. child understand? And I have to come down to that child level to explain mm -hmm. to that child. Now, what are the myths and the truth about sex? Okay. Okay, I'll go in and I'm sure tell you. <laughs> I will buy I me out. To to it out. Yeah. You know, for me, it's like what we said before. The actual essence of sex is the value of the body. Okay. Mm. And before I'm in getting any a sexual interaction with this person, do they have my emotions in place? You know, mm. because there's a I, I, I'm a mental health assessor, and one of the stipulations for the law is who is the nearest relative. The nearest relative is the person that is deemed as the wife or the husband. But the law goes further to say the father I'm saying this is my husband doesn't mean he also see me as his wife so mm. the assessor must ask you who's your partner you say mm. john the assessor must also ask john john do you see barbara as your partner mm. you just uh, no me I, i've been coming out around uh, we're not really we haven't really got into it really when that right. means they're not yeah. Yeah. so i'm going to have sex with you you need to be in the same space as me right okay and actually do you do you come across a person who's going to be gentle with me or aggressive? Even excuse me to say the person who takes abusive relationship, you you know the one who can be gentle and whoever just gets their way and get up and go. Right. So we need to understand the relationship and the emotions. For as a woman, the emotion must be there. The warmth, the care, right. the attention to details, and the listening. Mm. Because if I say no, is no. It doesn't matter if we're halfway there. As soon as I say no, right. if the person that I'm with is the person that listens to me, they're able to say, actually, are you okay? Yeah. And step back. Right. Yeah. You know? And that's important. Right. One of this is the area that is hurting our young ones because they are afraid if I say no, in this he very moment, me. he's gonna leave me. Right. And then my yeah. friends out there who all have boyfriends going to say, I'm back on the shelf again. Right. And, 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 and something I want to say that is a, a, a myth that's as old as time is when um, the boy will say, just like you just mentioned, oh, if you love me, you do it with me. Yes. That's a lie. Sex has nothing to do with love. <laughs> there are two different yeah. things. Yeah. Sex is different, love is right. different, even though it is stimulated it, by it, love. Uh, but there are two different things yeah and yeah. oh um oh you won't get pregnant because i've done it with so many girls and they didn't get pregnant right. that's a lie as well right it I is think... a lie right Tyler, you can you know... say to this because it's it before it falls mostly on the guys yeah not, not right. putting you on the spot here yeah I, and that's true because a lot of people are selfish you know, they want their yeah. own satisfaction at the expense of somebody else. But you yeah. know what? This goes back to a girl understanding who she really is. Identity. What's your identity? You know? Mm -hmm. And this goes back to the parents, too. Mm -hmm. Because if a parent feels that, well, you know, safe sex, uh you know, versus maybe open sex, versus abstinence, versus, you see, because a child is a product of the vibe for, from the parents. And I use the yeah, word vibe. The environment, the yeah. Vibe because you can tell a child something, but they are mm. watching you. They are yeah. watching you, right? Mm. Watching you. So it's one thing. Yeah. Okay, one day I was telling my son about the Bible, right? And he says, uh, he knows the Bible, but he's not practicing the Bible. He <laughs> told me that. So for me as a parent, I was like, okay. Okay, yeah, what do I do with this? this? Yeah. yeah, what do I do with this? Because mm -hmm. I love his openness, right? I love, but I, it was a big concern for me because you are living in a society that is ultra liberal you know, ultra liberal, you know, everything is open, you know, free Except, sex, all yes. over the thing. Yeah, permissible society, yeah. You know, and uh, so, you know, uh, when you talk about myth about sex, you know, mm -hmm. the thing is, it depends on 
how the child is raised, the parents of the child, you know. Yeah. Because, like you said, starting early, but sometimes some of us miss it. I know I miss this in some cases with yeah. teaching my child. You know? And, uh, you know, it's just important for girls and boys, because it's not just a girl, girl thing, right? You may say, okay, a boy may lie to a girl to sleep with her, but you are living in a society that LGBTQ as kind of is big right now. It's like huge. Whereby a boy can tell another boy something, you know, to stay with him. So we need to address that too. You know, it's not just okay. So we so we need to come out of the conservative idea that oh, sex is between a boy and, and a girl. girl. You know, Tyler, you're actually yeah. jumping. I mean, down. I think, yeah. Did, did you see my I next think, topic? Did you yeah, have you yeah. seen my so next we, topic? We Tyler? Know there is a, bigger, a bigger space out there. But I think I like a comment that Amma put in there. And I think maybe she came a little bit later about the responsibility and actually teaching the boys about boundaries, you know, yes. the importance of yes, having consent, consent and, respect, and respect rather than saying, if you don't do it for me because you don't love me. If you're wrong in my consent it's not about you know if i don't do it then what you are asking me do you want to if i say no or oh yes that is how it should be there shouldn't be a conditions attached and if a, 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 a guy has been socialized into understanding the how to treat themselves as well as treat a, a person they are going into relationship with these sort of questions and pressures are definitely not going to be put on our children. And I think it goes both ways. You know, if you, yeah, a, a girl who's also all out there and it says, you know, you, you'll be proud, you'll be lucky to be my boyfriend. And this part, this person wants to be, be part of the crew. Mm -hmm. So they're going along with it. So it's not always just the men imposing or the guys imposing on the girls or but it's it could be both ways and i think it's really understanding how do i teach my young girl how do i teach my young man how to have their boundaries how to understand respect how to understand consent how to understand what is it when you want to be with a person you know what is it you're proposing well well wow. Every good thing must come to an end. And then here, yeah, time to show sure. why every time we're discussing something interesting, time <laughs> flies like yeah. no man's business. We still have two more topics that we have to talk about, but we couldn't yeah. touch the topics today. Barbara, you have to join us next time. <laughs> Kaya, you have to join us as yeah. well. You know, and of course, you notice that it seemed like I'm going short. And that is because my seat, I don't know what's wrong with it. It's rolling. <laughs> Okay, um, I I honestly wish we can continue to discuss this. This is a very interesting topic, and um, we have not even got into the aspect of abuse, Daniela. That is a whole different topic. A whole kettle of fish. Oh, you guys are just jumping ahead of me. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. But um, honestly, I want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you so much, Tayo. I, I I I just called on Tayo, and Tayo was like. Okay, Thank well, you. I, um, I don't understand what you want me to do, but I'm like, oh, don't worry, you just come have a the conversation. Girls. You just come yeah. in to have a conversation and gist with the girls. Right. You know, and I'm sure you enjoyed it. I thank you so much, everyone that joined on YouTube, Facebook, on Instagram. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Owisu. Um, you really enjoyed the session. Very insightful. Yes, uh, Mother's Body is always very insightful. In right. case if you've not subscribed, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's a Mother's Body with Omolola. And um, on Facebook, is Aaron's Place and a talk with Adoni. On Instagram, it is LOL TV. And I think we do have it on Facebook as well. Please share, like, subscribe. Subscribe to our channel. We teach each other. We educate each other because I'm telling you as parents, we cannot do it alone. And honestly, yeah. I just want to say this. As parents, you have the permission to do what you what you think is right for your kids. For your child, yes. Yes, you yes. have the permission to do that. Yes. They are not our parents. We are their parents. We have the permission to logically, reasonably, 
redirects them because they will always right. I, i'm telling you this age and time is is, is interesting i, I don't think it's hard it's it hard for the hard. children it is it's really hard. hard it is hard and um, i want to say thank you so much again please uh, uh, remember when it comes to sex education timing is very important and let us always debunk the myth you know yeah. let us always debunk the myth i just feel like going on and going on but let's um, talk about sex <laughs> I know, right? Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things. Yes. Yeah. I think with these few minutes, we've been able to help a lot of young mothers out there, letting you understand it's not too early to start. And right. please, if you're starting with your child at 12, it, I will tell it's you. It's okay. Mm. Oh, no, I, I think it's no, because, because you haven't done it. A lot. Uh, yes. uh, uh. They didn't have their, in the UK, they would have had their injection that if you have the i can't remember the name of it so that um by the time you have sex from the age of 12 until 26 to prevent ovarian cancer because Can now they're think, reducing yeah. the age at which they give it because there's so much information children are getting into sexual relationships without knowing and then yeah, yeah. at that puberty stage what you're doing is introduce opening yourself for cancer so yeah. they're having to give children these injections. The same thing here. Yeah. So I think for the, for the girls. Yeah. 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 If you if you haven't done it, it's okay to start. <laughs> But the ideal and, thing is start it as soon as possible. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, if it, it don't don't be in a hurry to have sex, no, please. No. Don't. Enjoy oh, yourself. It's like enjoy a your body. Mm. Whether you're a boy or a girl, yeah. enjoy this time. And on that note, we will be wrapping up. And until we see you again on the 22nd of July, make it a date with Tayo, Barbara, and I on oh. a mother's body, raising multicultural children on the United States. Again, thank you so much to our YouTube um, subscribers, you. uh, people viewing our YouTube family, Facebook family, Aaron's Place, yep. our talk, and yeah. TV. Thank you. We love you. And please watch out for Single Again with LFA and Barbara. And of course, Tayo is going to be a guest on that show too. I can <laughs> Is it? I can oh, you. are you single again, Tayo? <laughs> I will definitely love to join that. And, well, you know. Today I'm outside in the garden. Tomorrow, next time, who knows where I'll be. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm not open, yeah. So you can hear the storm. We're having thunderstorm. Yeah. Anyhow, right. in um, the United States. I, I don't know if it's everywhere, but I think it's in No, we're places. fine. Yes, yes. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye. Lola, one minute. Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay. Are we off air?